is it that a studio that had made such a reputation for itself with a very signature sound, thanks to Jimmy McDonald, we're now in an era where you, you're thinking about going outside the studio for sound, not using Jimmy. Then I want to talk about what feels like to me a trend that started around that era where animated films wanted to emulate the sound of live action mm -hmm. films. That's a really good point. You know, if you go back and listen to Lady and the Tramp or some movie from the 50s, Peter Pan, Cinderella, there's almost no Foley in those movies. Lady and the Tramp's full of uh, dogs on linoleum floors and things. You don't hear a thing. Yeah, I know. Nothing. I watched it recently. There's nothing. And now, if you were to do that movie, it would be just jam-packed with toenails and uh, you know everything. So the appetite, I think, from the directors and, and possibly from the audience, too, to hear a more realistic palette in the sound score was growing. Uh, Jimmy retired in the 70s, probably Jimmy McDonald, and um, he had a stage called C Stage on the studio lot, and it was lined with drawers from top to bottom, and you'd, it, it was hilarious because you'd open a drawer and there'd be can openers, and then another drawer would be chains, another drawer would be women's underwear, and you know, it was just, it, it was like anything could happen in that room, and did. Um, and he created this legacy for sound effects that then began to retire with him. So you would have uh, a few people that knew how to do his job, not with the expertise, uh, it wasn't the digital age yet, but we had a sound library we went to, mostly of effects that Jimmy created that were just stored as a library effect. And then as we began working on movies like Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin, uh, it became apparent we needed to start going out and finding who are the best talents in the industry because we don't have that core proficiency anymore at the studio. There's not a guy like Jimmy McDonald sitting there doing all the movies. So you had to go out and shop. And that's where we came across you. You had to go out and shop and look at people who's doing the best work in the industry. Who are the people out there that can help us uh, reimagine how we make animated films? And so with that process, at least at Disney over four or five years, the appetite for the effects in a film grew and not just the literal effects uh, in the stems and the amount of effects in the movie, but the quality of them and trying to pitch them and trying to turn it into something that was very sympathetic with the dialogue and the music. And uh, that was something that was very new, I think, for all of us.